Plugin of the week is the UA1073 EQ. The UA1073 um, EQ, a more recent release by Universal Audio, is more than just an EQ or an emulation of the 1073. Uh, what Universal Audio done, has done here is something that is uh, somewhat unique to uh, a kind of plug-in processing in that it integrates more fully with their Universal Audio interfaces. And while that's not going to be something that I'm going to very specifically demonstrate here, we're going to focus on the sound uh, within a mixing approach here within, within um, this particular demonstration, um, I do want to focus on some of the ways that this plugin is a unique emulation of the 1073. The 1073 is probably the most emulated EQ they're, they're in hardware form, like so many companies have done it. And even in software form, many companies have, have done it, most notably probably the uh, emulations by Waves of the Shep 73, which is also more or less a recent uh, version of it. Um, and they also have uh, harmonic distortion emulations, and Waves and Universal Audio has done it in a very different way. So here's what is in particular very unique, uh, and this works from the console. So if you're familiar with the Universal Audio world, then you'll see here that there is a, a console which allows you to record plugins for your audio inputs. So as the audio signal comes in through your interface as part of the uh, D to A to D conversion stage, it's actually able to go through plugins before being recorded to the hard drive. So this in effect is like an input channel on an audio console. And so the input channel on an audio console would have a mic preamp, equalization, inserts uh, com for compression, all of that sort of stuff. And then that signal path would then be bussed out or directed out into the input of a tape machine or a multi-track recorder, giving you the ability to not only to filter, um, to equalize, to compress the signal before it gets recorded. And this is what Universal Audio has done with their console application. Um, and then also um, monitoring, right, which can also be set up here. So we're not going to get into the how-to on this end. What is unique, though, is that uh, the way that this works is it works with um, uh, Universal Audio's Unison technology. And what that effectively means is that um, in the actual plugin here, so this is the plugin that is in on the preamp uh, input. When I make adjustments here or to the actual hardware input settings on my Universal Audio interface, it's going to make those same adjustments here. So if I switch between mic and line, it's going to switch between mic and line, you know, within the application here. And this is going to give me the ability to, so let's just see here, that switches to line. It's probably not going to show up here um, on this, but this will allow me to switch um, between the different um, mic settings so that the hardware actually steps along with this. So the settings that I change here are reflected in the hardware and vice versa. So if I were to hit the phase invert here, this is actually just going to disappear disappear because I don't have this connected to a universal audio interface. And it's not going to let me change these impedance session, uh, settings and pad settings and all of that sort of stuff, but this is the way that it would be configured. So as I make the mic pre-changes, it actually is applying the emulation of the harmonic distortion of the Neve preamp um, going into the recording stage. So when you actually operate it on the insert of a host application like Pro Tools, you uh, don't get the full use of that. You just get the harmonic distortion characteristic for whatever line input settings, but none of the mic input settings. So this allows you to change the impedance. So low impedance, perhaps if you're working with a ribbon mic, uh, to give you more gain on the input. You can pad that down. They've got a high impedance, which is sort of the standardized input. And what they've done is they've actually emulated not only the uh, input transformers, uh, the Mariner transformer, the famous one for the 1073, the mic preamp or line amp stages, um, all of the amplification stages for each of the three band EQs, uh, the passive filter, but also um, the uh, output um, amplification circuitry, um, that uh, comes after the EQ, leading into the fader, and then the fader output and the, and the harmonic distortion that's there. So what they claim is there are actually 10 points in the process where you actually get distortion. So what you have here, which is sort of unique, is that if I actually run this EQ, and even in bypass, or even if I take the EQ out of circuit, right, as it defaults, you are getting the sound or the sonic character of the signal as it would pass through the whole signal chain, including the fader, 
even though you haven't put a drop of EQ in. Okay, so this is something that is really cool. And a lot of plugins um, do this. So this is not unique to um, Universal Audio. So there are other companies that have done this as well. But it's kind of cool to understand that. So even um, just with some basic settings here. So, so I, what I've done is I've instantiated a whole group of these. So if I bypass them, there will be a subtle difference here. There's music in your voice. Or not so subtle. A song so soft and sweet that I had no choice. My love. I'm praying for a whisper in my ear. So this is without any EQ, any gain, or anything added in. So we're already getting some um, some um, effect in a positive way, okay, as part of this. So this is cool, and this is true to, to what would happen with the original. Now, the reason why you have a separate output gain stage here in addition to the fader is that you can actually push the fader to get more harmonic distortion and then offset that with the output. So we can actually drive tracks a little bit more at different stages here. So we could bring the gain up here at the line input back down here or back down at the output and overdrive more of the channel of the emulation uh, um, so uh, of this uh, particular EQ. So this gives you um, a lot of tonal coloration if you start really digging into it. Now, um, what comes in first, and uh, there is something also unique when you use this on the console, is that the filter is always in circuit, whether the um, EQ is in or out, which is kind of cool. Um, so, and you're still getting that harmonic distortion characteristic. So all this stuff is really amazing. But what I'm going to do here is I want to just kind of start with some individual sounds here and see if we can uh, sort of um, put something together really quick here. So let's just say, so let's just start with a, a kick drum and just kind of work with some basic EQ. So I'm just going to do like a little, little filter there on the bottom end and then kind of give it a little boost here. Now we can actually click on the actual frequencies and on the dots here. For a different gain stage. So I'm going to do this and have to put the EQ in. It doesn't default in. Because of the limitations of frequencies here, you know, we're going to get to 360. I probably would like to go a little bit lower than that, but this is where we're going to get to. Okay, so let's start there. And uh, I'm just going to work these guys in one at a time here. So I'm going to give a little bit more boost here to the bottom end of the of the snare. Let's kind of focus on this a little bit here. Maybe what I want to do here is kind of go up and kind of give a little bit of a boost. Now, I think actually the the uh, that that weird tone that's kind of in there, I'm going to tuck that away and maybe give a little bit more of a boost on the top end here. And this is the snare bottom mic. Right, so I backed off a little bit of the low end there, and then let's kind of work with the uh, overheads.
Uh oh, it might be overloading already. These are can be pretty intensive uh, um, in terms of processing power. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, kill a few of these guys here to see if we can kind of fit in here on the workload. Wow. Didn't expect that. All right, so I'll take this off of the snare bottom, and let's see if it, see how many we can get the bass in here too. It's a bit of a processor hog, as you are learning. A bit too much for this demo, obviously. Okay, so let's just see if I can uh, um, uh, follow this. I think there might be something else that's going awry here. So let me just see if I can load in another emulation and if this takes it. Okay, all right. So this obviously is something that was uh, up there. So maybe the day is saved. You should read the warning. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of drive this guy a little bit. So what's unique about this too is that um, with the Neve, and this is true to the original, the gain stages when it says minus 20, uh, it's kind of interesting. It, it's actually more of what the input is as opposed to what you want to do with it. So this isn't subtracting 10 dB or 20 dB from the signal. It's assuming that there is a minus 10 input or a minus 20 input and applying gain accordingly. So it sort of works inversely. So this is more gain to less gain. And then when you pass, there's an off area in between and then switches over to the mic preamp. And so, uh, and you go through the different gain stages on the mic preamp. So this is actually quite true to the original in that regard. Uh, but it's sounding really good so far. So let's kind of work in a little bit of uh, mid, mid range. Work in a little bit of warmth here. Adds a nice little edge there. All right, so let's see if we can kind of work in a couple of guitar tracks here. I think I'm going to leave this alone in terms of the preamp. So I'm sitting here Nice fat richness there from the bottom end as well. All right, let's add in a vocal on this and see what we can get from here. Let's 
skip right over to the verse. There's music in your voice. And this is where, like, you really want to get the air A from the... A song so soft and so... No. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see if I can zip over uh, another copy of this and make this go in. Oh. Okay. So it, this is exceeding the uh, load limit here. Hmm. Let's see. What can I remove? I'm going to remove that snare bottom. And uh, let's make this work. There's music in your voice. All right, so maybe I have to take this guy out and put this guy back in. There we go. There's music in your voice. Little trickery, that's all. A song so soft and sweet that I had no choice, my love. I'm praying for a whisper in my ear Just the sound to make it clear So I'm sitting here waiting by the phone Talk to me, baby, I don't want to be wrong That 12K on the high end is just magical air. So what you have here in, on the high frequency on a 1073, and I didn't really go over this, is you always have a 12 kilohertz shelf. Um, then you have a single parametric in the middle, which has an off position, uh, 360, 700, 1.6, 3.2, 4.8, and 7.2K. And then you have a low frequency shelf with 220, 110, uh, 60, and uh, 40, I believe, or I can't see that. 35 and 60 on the low end, and then an offsetting. And then you have up to 18 dB of boost or attenuation on, on any of those bands. There's also a passive um, EQ, uh, a filter down at the bottom. Um, so there's no amplification circuit involved here, and it's a third-order noise filter, so it's 18 dB per octave, pretty aggressive. Um, you also have a phase invert switch, which is just a simple phase inversion, EQ in and out, which is just that. But even with this out, you're getting some of the harmonic distortion characteristic. So let's see what this sounds like on the track. There's music in your voice. A song so soft and sweet that I had no choice. My love. I'm praying for a whisper in my ear. Just a sound to make it clear. So I'm sitting here waiting by the phone. Talk to me, baby. It's more boost on the low end on the kick drum. I will be waiting for you to come on home. So talk to me, baby. Tell me that I'm not alone. My heart is open wide. Amazing. And you notice the amazing like richness and open of the openness of this. And this is a classic, um, classic 1073 sound and why people love it so much so uh anyway here's my uh sort of stumbled through <laughs> uh example or um overview of the uh universal audio uh 1073 uh preamp and eq really really great one um very 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 well done uh, really does capture that characteristic uh tone and uh, the only thing you're gonna have to do if you want to put a lot of these on is to uh, stack up on your Universal Audio satellite processors. All right, there you have it. Let's uh, wrap this one up and move on.